Welcome to this presentation. My name is Kata Chize and she is Pinya Kati. And we are going to talk about our large scale or part of our large scale research project that deals with deaf and hard of hearing learners in Hungary. And today we are um, going to um, introduce you to the teachers aspect and how teachers view uh, their learners, their special needs learners. Um, before um, we go into the results that Kati will do, uh, I will uh, give you a short um, introduction to the background of the study and explain the, the methods, the research methods that we have used to collect and analyze the data. Um, all of our presentation on deaf learners starts with deaf identity, who are the deaf people, and there are two competing views on, on deaf individuals and in general and, and deaf learners in particular. Uh, or the first view is called the pathological view. The pathological view uh, defined deafness as a, dif dif uh, as a dis disability, a deficiency that needs to be mitigated and, and overcome. And deaf learners need, need to be helped to overcome this difficulty. And in, in this paradigm, um, lip reading skills are essential, and as well as the ability to produce speech is, is also essential. Um, however, in the past couple of years and even decades, there, uh, there is a growing trend that views, um, that like comes away from the pathological view and looks at deafness uh, as, as a, as a cult, with a cultural view. And, um, and the proponent of this paradigm says, say that um, deaf constitute a linguistic and cultural minority. And uh, their, their first, their native or their first language is not uh, the language of the country they were born in, but uh, the local uh, sign language. This is reflected in Hungary in the 2009 uh, Parliamentary Act, which, which so like declares that Hungarian sign language is a, is a natural language, and then deaf individuals have a right um, for education in their native language, which is, the, which is the Hungarian sign language for them in Hungary. And uh, the, the Parliamentary Act also says that from 2017, there needs to be bilingual education for, for deaf uh, students with the sign language and the local language uh, together. Uh, the research program was initiated to um, to, uh, to do research for the introduction of the bilingual education. Um, you also have to know that um, 60,000 people in Hungary are deaf. This is an approximation. And the other statistics that are interesting or good to know is that 90-95% of deaf children are born into hearing families, so their, their identities might be different from your parents or your children' identity. Identities are different from your own identity. Um, as for the schools, there are, sev there are seven residential primary schools in Hungary that specialized uh, in, in teaching deaf learners. They are called um, deaf schools. Uh, there is no secondary school in Hungary, especially for the deaf, but there is one secondary vocational school in Budapest with uh, classes specializing uh, in deaf education. And uh, there is one school in, also in Budapest for the hard of hearing learners. Now, the, um, um, in the situation is, um, for our study is a bit specific because you, we looked into these residential schools and the secondary vocational schools and we collected data there. But you also have to know that integration into the mainstream education has been uh, promoted widely in Hungary. Therefore, uh, a good number of deaf learners are integrated into mainstream education, which means that uh, these traditional deaf schools don't have uh, 
enough um, incoming students. Therefore, the have classes are filled in with other students with other special needs, which makes the situation very difficult and, and very complex for the, for the teachers. Um, under the current Hungarian law, uh, um, the teaching of foreign languages is compulsory in these uh, schools, and all of the students start around grade five. And uh, we talked about teachers and, and um, had heads of these schools, princip school principals, and our impression is that, or our knowledge is that, very few students are exempted from uh, language teaching. So all of, all of them, or almost all of them, uh, do have a foreign language classes. Um, the, the research informs teachers in these specialized schools, but as very uh, many deaf students are integrated into mainstream schools, uh, teachers working in mainstream um, schools might also find the, the project important. Um, the research question we would like to answer in this presentation is how language teachers in schools of the deaf and hard of hearing view students' motivation, attitudes, language learning choices, needs, and goals. Okay, but remember, this is the teacher perspective. We have student data as well, but it's not part of this presentation today. Methods, we went to um, nine schools, seven primary, one vocational, one for the hard of hearing, and we did interviews with 10 teachers of English, and, and German uh, teachers as, as foreign language teachers. Uh, most of them are, are teachers of English, and most of the schools uh, offer English as a foreign language. There is a single school in, in Hungary near the Austrian border that uh, their uh, German is told. Uh, there are eight females and two male, males um, in our sample and um, their teaching experience ranges uh, between 3 to 20 years. The instrument, we use semi-structured in interviews, which means that we had some preliminary questions and we, we knew what we wanted to cover in the interviews, but the, but the interviews were free in the sense that the, the teachers could, could raise any issues that they felt was important or could, or could add anything that was, was important to them. Um, we had, um, so like the two parts, uh, we, we um, asked background information on the teachers where, about their own education and their own experience. And then we asked about uh, the school environment like waivers and language learning. And then um, we also um, had questions about uh, desired goals for the, the learners. So what goals the teacher thought that the learners might reach. And then difficulties, obviously difficulties factored in, in, the, in the interviews. And then we also asked teachers about their ideas how to improve um, the situation. Uh, we visited the, uh, some of the lessons, so we had a, so like an um, image of what's going on, but we also asked teachers um, what, what our, um, um, so like an average lesson is like in their, in their schools. Uh, we, were, uh, we were interested, in addition, last but not least, we were interested in Hungarian sign language use and how uh, teachers learn, whether or not they learned Hungarian sign language, whether or not they used Hungarian sign language in the classes with the students who were all proficient users of the sign language. Um, we did something called content analysis, which uh, means that we collated all the interviews, all 10 interviews, and searched for emerging themes within the interviews, similarities and differ differences. And uh, Kati will talk about the results. Okay, 
Okay, so yes, it's uh, important to note that uh, not all uh, teachers that we have interviewed are language teachers. Some of them have been trained to become language teachers. Others have been primarily trained as special uh, education teachers, and some of them have certificates of both. Um, well, they have degrees in both uh, uh, backgrounds. Um, we will not cover all the points that we covered in the, in the interviews. I, we would like to more focus on what uh, Kota mentioned, how the teachers uh, view students' motivations, attitudes, uh, lear language learning needs, and, and uh, language learning choices. And we will try to demonstrate what we have found using quotations from the interviews. Okay, so our, our first um, kind of emerging uh, topic was uh, how teachers view their learners' motivated learning behavior, so how they actually see that their learners are motivated to learn a foreign language. And uh, it's interesting to note that these pretty much coincide with uh, regular uh, language learning experiences of, of uh, non-special needs uh, educators. So basically, uh, students use English in and outside the classroom. They're uh, many times happy to do that. Uh, they're asking meanings of unknown words of the teacher that they have uh, account encountered outside the classroom. They saw it on, on, uh, on the internet. They, they have seen signs. They, they bring it to the classroom. They ask the teacher what these mean. Um, they use Facebook. They use email. Um, many schools do have contacts uh, with uh, schools, uh, in, so international contacts, uh, schools in Finland and, and uh, Scandinavian countries. Uh, some of them use online dictionaries, um, as, as uh, the teachers have told us. Um, and some, some uh, learners actually talk about how they have traveled abroad and, and they have understood the signs at the airport and so on. So here you have two quotes of uh, two different teachers. One of them says, one of our students traveled to Brussels as part of a prize she had won um, to visit the European Parliament. And she said that she understood the signs at the airport and many other things. Uh, and this is a good thing. It, it makes you say, wow. And, and there's so many things that we can teach our students. And, and this made the teacher feel good, of course. Um, and from an another uh, aspect, another teacher said that there are more and more students getting A's in the uh, English language uh, classroom, so they're, they're doing well. They're more and more interested. Someone, uh, sometimes it happens that they greet the teacher outside the classroom in the corridor with good morning. Uh, and it, it was not just one uh, teacher that said that during the interview. It was uh, two or three uh, teachers out of the, the ten mentioned that. So. Uh, right, another uh, aspect that we found important is how teachers perceive their learners' attitudes towards uh, uh, language learning. And, and uh, this sometimes, well, as, as with uh, all children who are learning a foreign language in an institution, in, in school, um, we found varied results. Some are very enthusiastic. Um, uh, they can't wait to start to learn the foreign language. Someone, uh, some of them have heard from other students how great it is to learn a foreign language. Uh, some of them actually compete with, uh, with other groups of learners. Um, so you have a, a quotation from a teacher who has heard how his students uh, talk to other students comparing where they are at in the material. Okay? So, um, so it's important that they, the learners know and, that and are able to show it and communicate it. And there's also communication about English going on among classes. What I observe is learners saying to one another, well, I already know this in English. And what do you know? And I, don't, I know that in English. So um, they, they feel that they, the students have positive attitudes towards learning a foreign language. Others uh, feel that there is a, a, a sense of or an attitude of indifference. Uh, from the part of the learners, um, some of them, uh, some teachers have said that this, meaning the foreign language or learning a foreign language, is an extra unnecessary burden for them. Um, some of them, uh, some teachers mentioned that there are discipline problems, there are pro uh, uh, other issues that come up and that make language learning difficult uh, for the for the te uh, for the learners. 
Um, some of them are a lot older than their peers, so it's difficult. Okay? So you have a quotation of a teacher who also experiences difficulties in terms of the attitude, so it's not all positive, but it's, it's good to see that there are also positive uh, attitudes. So the, how teachers perceive the choices, uh, the language learning choices that the uh, learners make, uh, of course, we know that many times it's, it's not the learner who makes the choice to learn a foreign language, uh, especially if uh, a limited number of foreign languages are offered at school. Nonetheless, um, we, we found um, a nice example. Uh, one of the teachers mentioned that they also teach uh, home e economics to uh, the, s the smaller ones, so in grade three. And when they are finished with the tasks, the, the, the kids, they, want, they go up to the teacher and they want to see the English language Pictionary. So they really are making the choice already to learn the foreign language, which is great. Okay? So, uh, and the teacher feels that this is success on her part because other students have told the learners that they, they will be learning English and how great that would be. Um, teachers also claim that the immediate social context is very important uh, in, in influencing learners' attitudes, of course, and this is what we have experienced in other contexts as well, as well not only with the deaf and hard of hearing uh, learners. Um, so it, the, con the social context has an immediate effect on, on the motivations and even the choice to learn a foreign language. Again, you have uh, different uh, views here. So the first one where, where the parent is encouraging the learner to, to go and learn the foreign language because uh, they will have more job opportunities in the nearby countries or, or even further in, in the UK or in, in, in um, other English speaking countries. Also, um, it can happen that uh, uh, the, the parent decides to ask for a waiver. Okay, we, uh, Kata mentioned that sometimes uh, students do get waivers so they don't have to uh, take the foreign language class and sometimes this choice is made by the parent before the teacher actually can have a say in the, the learner's um, foreign language learning career. Okay, so that's um, the, the kind of the case with the last quote here, or the last teacher uh, that's mentioned on this slide. So out of the 11 students, about half of them upon, a, upon arrival to school, school without me even uh, uh, seeing the, the learner already came with a paper asking me uh, to exempt the, the learner from the foreign language classes. So, but um, thankfully these are not so many cases, or that these are not uh, so high in number. So how teachers view the goals and the, and the learners' needs in terms of what they need to learn uh, when they are teaching the foreign language uh, to, to their learners. Um, they perceive uh, the, the goals need to be adjusted to the individual needs of each, each learner. Um, they would like to, so they aim to teach the foreign language so that the learners can get by in everyday life using the, the foreign language, especially in terms of written communication. We we're primarily talking about written communication. Um, some, of, uh, some teachers mentioned that uh, most, some of the students will probably need, a, need foreign languages for their future jobs, so it might be useful. Um, many of them will have the opportunity to go on to uh, study programming where they might use English especially. And some teacher has men have mentioned uh, that uh, basically teaching a foreign language to deaf and hard of hearing learners opens up a world for them. So here you have two, well, longish quotes, but um, the, the first one is about uh, a learner who was very good at foreign languages, and this is about uh, individualizing uh, the language learn, well, the teaching of, of uh, the foreign language and uh, catering for the special needs of that one person who will likely go on to secondary school. Hopefully she will not be exempt from foreign language learning there, but maybe end up uh, taking the final examination and using um, her foreign language knowledge. Okay. Um, and yeah, for, her, for learners who find language learning more difficult, the goal is for them to become familiar with the language and be able to deal with situations that come up when traveling. We mentioned that. Uh, so they can read basic signs at the airport or in the hotel or fill in forms. <clears throat> and the other uh, teacher mentioned this uh, concept of 
learning a foreign language also opens up a world for the deaf and hard of hearing uh, learners as well, so that they know that there is a, a, a world of people besides Hungarians, uh, people with different cultures, and this might give these learners motivation to go on and continue learning a foreign language. Okay. Um, in spite of all this, uh, teachers in Hungary, the teacher, foreign language teachers of the deaf and hard of hearing, do face a lot of challenges. Um, so it's difficult to meet all these needs and goals because they do lack language teaching materials. So all the photos that you see here, they are self-made materials by uh, the teachers themselves. Um, there, there is a lack of consistent regulation in, t in terms of who gets waivers and who doesn't, and, and uh, this makes it difficult for them to um, apply these, these regulations. Um, there are also challenges in terms of the, the uh, learner and teacher communication. Like I said, that not all of the uh, teachers have been trained to uh, teach uh, deaf and, and hard of hearing learners, so they do not necessarily uh, speak the sign language or use the sign language. They're not fluent users of, of Hungarian sign language. Some of them are learning. Uh, some of them have gone very far and, and have acquired um, very high skills in terms of the use of Hungarian sign language. And of course, there is a lack, well, of course, uh, sadly, um, there is a lack of professional forums and community which within the scope of our project we would like to enhance and, and uh, we uh, are planning to hold a workshop for um, these colleagues. So in conclusion, um, our data actually shows that uh, deaf and hard of hearing le uh, language learners' uh, motivations are well perceived by the, the teachers. They, um, their attitudes are clear and their language learnings and goals are clear for the teachers. And this, these views on their learners' motivations uh, influence their own perceptions of their own professional uh, success. So I would like to end with a quote from one of the teachers here, which I, I found inspiring. I hope that you do too. Um, th this teacher talked about the deaf and hard of uh, hearing learners. Uh, their skills can be developed. They can, they can do it just as well or even better than their hearing peers, but many times it's a matter of motivation, persistence, and diligence. And on the left-hand side, you see actually a worksheet uh, which was pretty well filled in by one of the learners. As you can see, you have the words jumbled up and they had to spell it correctly and also they had to write down um, the numbers with letters and they did it pretty well. So thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, we are ready to answer them. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yeah. of course. Does it ring a bell? Totally. It's just you ask me some of these questions. I would probably answer this the same way. Uh -huh. Lacking of the community and training teachers, lacking in my country also. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the, the quote you actually, actually written, the colleagues, uh, I can also write they can do it even more than the hearing peers. Yes, yes, yeah. it's... So thank you for this. Well, thank you thank for you. coming. Any other questions? Can yes. I ask you, how do you introduce the foreign language to the children? In a written form or... In a, excuse me? Practically, how do you do that? Well, it, it, it varies from teacher to teacher. In uh, year four, uh, they start learning the foreign language. And basically, it, de it depends on the school, uh, on, on the different, we have been to seven, well, nine different schools, as my colleague has mentioned, and basically, the, the teacher is so much isolated there that they are using their own methods. They're using their own, whatever they can, whatever means they can, and whatever and training they have had. Yes. And most of the teachers teach uh, English through Hungarian or German through Hungarian and uh, some of the students have difficulties in even understanding Hungarian words. And we had one teacher out of the 10 who was a, a, a proficient user of the Hungarian sign language. Many of the teachers didn't use the sign language at all. 
I learned sign language from my kids. I yes, that, that in sign language, but the, the kids actually told me. <laughs> yes, many language. times that was the case. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, but if you remember that I told you that 90-95% of, of children are born to hearing parents, so the, the children are learning the language not from their parents but from their peers in kindergarten or school and they are teaching their mm -hmm. teachers. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. That was a fascinating question where you mentioned that um, there is no I don't know, association or any kind of uh, group helping these teachers. Uh, you said you would like to help them. How is it possible or how, how can someone help? If, I know, because there are many, I think, really good teachers trying to develop materials and trying out methods. Is it would it be possible to try to, I don't know, uh, find a platform for this kind of we will have a workshop in November. We will try to um, to reach uh, teachers in Hungary and outside Hungary as well. But you have to remember what Peter said in the dinosaur lecture that these teachers are teaching their full load of teaching and many of them are also visiting teachers to neighboring schools with uh, deaf learners, integrated deaf learners. So I think time and, and money are, are real issues here. So we are hoping to um, ha have these uh, colleagues come into contact with each other. Basically these are all the, the schools in Hungary that are specialized in uh, deaf and hard of hearing uh, learners for a, at the elementary level uh, and, and the, the vocational secondary level. Um, the, the rest of the learners are out there in integration, uh, so we have not really been able to contact a lot of colleagues who meet uh, deaf and hard of hearing learners in integration, but by starting uh, like a, a, a yeah, a forum like this uh, with the, the nine or 11 teachers that we had here um, is something that, that we are looking forward to, yes. There is a problem with integration and finding uh, learners who are learning foreign languages integration is that many of them, exam the first things parents do is exam mm -hmm. integrate their kids into mainstream education, but exam them from foreign language mm -hmm. learning in order to ease the burden of the integration and the other subject. I just maybe have one question that just really sort of come up to my mind. Um, I teach my kid Bosnian sign language and then at one point I asked uh, where I teach them sign language, I need to teach them American sign language. Mm -hmm. And one of my classes I actually brought American sign and I took some from YouTube, some examples, and they said differences, for example, in color. We say different colors in Boston and different colors in American Sign Language. Mm -hmm. So that's a question. Is it for, as a teacher, to teach them different sign languages? So we teach them as foreign language in, you know, native <laughs> and also yeah. in teach English. What, what motivation research says that you should teach the language that students want to learn and the problem with the American Sign Language is that um, the English spoken language is the global language, the lingua franca of the era, so most of the students would want to learn English, not the American Sign Language or any other sign languages, but the English that they can use over the Facebook so and when and traveling and on the internet, yes. But still, I think it's really, that's, that was my idea to, yeah. I also thought about this because I think it's easier or it, it's a really nice tool to use a visual language because it helps them to memorize. So uh, I was thinking, I was also thinking about maybe just for spelling, finger spelling, yeah. and then just the alphabet, just to, because what I experience is that there's no, I mean, there's not, it's not true that there's no use in just writing down what it's really boring. Yeah. It is, so you really have to use, of course, pictures, but it's easier for them to use a visual language. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, it's just yeah. a question. I don't know how to find <laughs> the answer, answer for that. <laughs> 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 
have some workshops about that yeah. to get some ideas. Because I used to have, like, now I'm from Serbia, and um, we now have children with special needs in our schools, mm -hmm. regular schools, so there are no uh, special schools for them anymore. And I had some autistic children, some children with dyslexia, and many others, and I didn't know what to do with them because I was not taught that at the faculty. And when I asked my colleagues, they just told me, yeah, give them tools. They're going to be like, that's, you know, the law is great to pass uh, that subject. And I didn't like it. I mean, because it's not fair. They're really not the same as the other kids, of course, because they have some kind of problems that they have to So it would be great to, you know, know more about that and to have some workshops where we could get some ideas what to do, how to create them. No, well, we, hopefully we can expand this yeah. in the future. So. Thank you very, very much. Thank, Thank you. you for coming.